have to make a, a very brief announcement before we begin the program. Uh, Secretary Bebet Bello uh, confirmed as of Friday at uh, 5 o'clock that he's joining us today. But uh, he was allegedly called to Malacanang for a conference by the President. So he can't make it, but uh, the good Secretary sent Assistant Secretary Amireyes to give us the latest information about OFWs in the Middle East and worldwide. So let's begin. Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan. Tayo po yung nagsisimula sa ating uh, lingguhang tapatan sa aristokrat. Napakahalaga po ng pag-uusapan sapagkat uh, marami po, marami tayong mga kababayan na may mga kamag-anak at mga mahal sa buhay at kaibigan na nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. The latest figures from Banco Central ng Pilipinas said after the United States of America, Middle East comes second in foreign remittances. There are hundreds of thousands of Filipinos in Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Kuwait. Beyond the figures, we will talk about what's going on. The Honorable Secretary of Labor is supposed to join us today. And uh, it will be recalled that he declared a ban on deployment of Filipino workers to Qatar after the three moneyed, powerful, and influential neighbors, including Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain recall their ambassadors in what is described as a serious diplomatic row. Egypt has also recalled its ambassador from Qatar. The next day, the good secretary allowed workers with the necessary certificates from POEA to go ahead with their travel. Last week, upon recommendation of the Doha-based Polo, Secretary Bellio allowed everyone interested in working in Qatar with appropriate uh, permits and all to push through with their plans. The Migrant Workers Act of 1995 says it all. OFW safety is foremost in the country's interests. Today, China and Iran are into naval exercise near the Strait of Hormuz as the United States holds joint exercises with Qatar. According to POEA officials, workers in Qatar and in other areas where there may be problems are having second thoughts of leaving their work because of uncertainty of work back home and that every alert level four, the government and international organizations fly workers home. And this includes IOM. Today, we will uh, listen to our resource persons on what they have to say about what's going on. At doon sa mga kaibigan natin na magtatanong din, ang sabi, ah, anyari. Ah, anyari. Simulan natin. Today, we have Assistant Secretary Amy Reyes representing Secretary Bebot Bellio, former Congressman uh, Jose Lusada. Siya po naman ay isa sa mga authors ng Migrant Workers Act of 1995, otherwise known as Republic Act 4082, if I'm not mistaken. Kasama rin natin si Arman Hernando ng uh, Migrante International. Uh, we will be joined by Toots Ople in a short while. So we'd like to listen to Assistant Secretary Reyes. Ano po ang pinakahuling informasyon? sa ating uh, mga kababayan sa Gitna Silangan. Please. Okay. Uh, foremost, uh, let me greet everyone. Happy morning. And uh, thank you for uh, once again inviting um, Dole in this um, daily. And actually, this is a regular activity. I was once here before when, uh, when I was a deputy administrator of a POEA. So about the latest news, well, actually, our secretary has released advisory number 02 dated uh, June 14, 2017. Well, actually, this advisory is uh, based on uh, close coordination with the Department of Foreign Affairs and, of course, our Philippine Labor Office in uh, Qatar. So based on this close coordination and, um, of course, uh, recommendation uh, coming from DFA and coming from our polo there, our secretary has lifted the temporary moratorium in the deployment of all workers bound for the state of Qatar. So what does it mean? It means for all the workers, uh, OFWs, whether you are new hires 
agency hired or balik manggagawa yung mga nagbabakasyon lang natin na ating mga kababayan. Well, of course, balik na ho tayo, normal process na. So, pwede na ho, na iniisyuhan na rin sila ulit ng exit clearance ng ating PUA. But uh, remember that uh, the Secretary has previously also lifted the temporary ban or moratorium in the case of Balik Manggagawa. Immediately after getting uh, information uh, and advice from our Polo and DFA that the situation there was actually not really adversely affecting directly our OFWs at yung sinasabi nun na nagkakagulo daw at uh, nagkakaubusan ng pagkain, nagkakaroon ng panic. Uh, Inassure naman tayo noon ng, ng ating polo, ng embahada natin doon at mismong ang Qatar no, uh, government at sinasabing maayos pa ang kalagayan ng ating mga kababayan doon. So immediately uh, a day after he lifted the ban, the temporary ban for the balik manggagawa. Medyo inobserve pa lang ho kasi natin yung sitwasyon kasi kung 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 papayagan naman kaagad natin lahat nung nung mga panahon na yon na hindi pa ganun kalinaw ang lahat ng mga nangyari eh baka kung sakaling lumaki ang problema magkaka problema din yung mga bagong uh, OFWs natin o mga new hires na tinatawag natin lalo na yung mga iba na wala pa naman talagang karanasan sa pagpunta doon just happened na sila ay nagkaroon ng oportunidad dahil na rin sa kanilang kakayahan at maayos ang kanilang mga dokumento na proseso sila ng maayos but still as a government as Department of Labor and Employment kailangan tingnan din natin primarily yung kapakanan nila so nung nakita naman na everything was fine everything was doing smoothly still so ito ho at naglabas na ang ating secretary ng advisory number 02 that is dated uh, June 14, 2017. Okay. Uh, Assistant Secretary, normally, uh, according to the Migrant Workers Act, uh, there is this team country approach or country team approach where everything will on the ground will be relayed to uh, the home office, regardless kung DFA yan or DOLE, pero iisa ang tinig. Uh, there is this opinion and this view that the decision of the good secretary was a knee-jerk reaction. Because we also asked the Department of Foreign Affairs if there was any advisory from the embassy and the promise I got was, we will get back to you. So, ibig sabihin nun, in diplomatic terms, wala kaming alam. Ano po ang inyong masasabi? Uh, tama naman yung binagit nyo, no? Part nung in the past, normal process na ganun, no? May mga, uh, of course, coordination with with the FA, may announcement ng alert level, but uh, we also have to bear in mind naman that uh, when the secretary did, it was more of a preventive measure. Para tingnan lang ng isang araw o dalawang araw at in, co in close coordination din naman yan sa ating uh, DFA. So, no, no nag-advise na sa atin ng DFA at in din tayo ng ating polo at nag and also the secretary is immediately convened yung crisis management team at the level of Dole, uh, headed by other secretary Dominador Sai. So it was more of a preventive uh, action on the part of the Department of Labor and Employment. Well, uh, you've been uh, with the government for some time, and uh, as far as I recall, whenever there is a crisis, there was a crisis uh, before, uh, Dole and DFA would send people to assess the situation. Was there any team sent to Qatar to assess? Well, actually, meron na po kaagad na pinadala po, no? Na team doon, uh, yung tinatawag na natin na rapid assessment uh, team or yung RRT rin natin, no? So, tiningnan din nila yung actual na sitwasyon. At mga veterano na rin naman itong mga pinapadala ng ating secretary pag may mga ganyang crisis. At uh, kaagad-agad ho ang mga coordination dyan. In fact, every day, at sabi nga sa amin na secretary, every hour we should be monitoring the situation. So, so far naman, uh, da, kaya nga inisyo na itong advisory na ito. So, mukhang wala namang ganong epekto na makakatakot natin para sa ating mga kababayan. So, but still, the close monitoring is, uh, we've been doing it in partnership with DFA and also our polo. At uh, patuloy pa rin, no, yung uh, pagmamonitor even at the level ho, ng central office ng ating Department of Labor and Employment. I had an interview with somebody into migration. I would consider him an expert. And uh, what he told me was disturbing because while we may not be able to see the impact today, 
there may come a time when the impact would be felt, especially when we get to feel the sensitivity of the Arabs. Na in times of need, once na iniwan mo sila, parang sasama ang loob. And given the fact that we have competition from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, and even China, there may come a time when Qatar and the other countries, you know, would consider them rather than Filipino workers. Well, uh, actually, um, we're, we're banking no, on our good relations, uh, bilateral and multilateral relations with Middle East countries, and that includes Qatar. At uh, napakaganda ho for the past uh, years, several years already, we have a very good working relations with Qatar, no? yung even our diplomatic and yung pagpapadala rin po natin ng mga, mga manggagawa natin doon. At siguro ang isang masasabi natin na talagang plus factor, no? yung pagkuha ng ating mga manggagawang Pilipino, yung kasanayan natin, yung competencies of the Filipino workers, yung ating resiliency, yung flexibility natin, and most importantly ho, yung attitude ng ating workers. No? When we do our work, we put our hearts into it. Ito ho yung mga tinatawag natin na kalidad, no? na mga qualities, uh, attitude ng mga manggagawang Pilipino na gustong gusto po ng, ng ating mga uh, dayuhang employers, uh, ating mga foreign employers, kasi hindi lang ho masipag ang mga Pilipino. Eh. Hindi lang ho magaling ang mga Pilipino. May malasakit tayo pag tayo ay nagtatrabaho. So yung demand, hindi ho kami nakakakita na bababa ang demand sa atin. But as you said, of course, um, for any crisis that is happening or for any crisis that we'll be projecting, the government of the Philippines has threaded uh, contingencies and uh, reintegration program for our OFW. Yeah. And this is not the first time po no, na nagkaroon ng, ng ganitong possible na sitwasyon at napaghahandaan naman natin, hindi lang ho sa tulong ng government, but also other stakeholders, private partners po. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, uh, you were once an ambassador, you served the foreign affairs. Uh, ano ba ang tingin ninyo sa mga Arabo? Uh, are they really that sensitive? Uh, mahalagang pag-usapan nito dahil we have good relations. The president just visited uh, Qatar last April and there was an assurance that uh, the relations would get better. Yes, sir. Uh, first, uh, <coughs> Uh, good morning, at uh, belated uh, Father's Day sa lahat, especially to you. Um, Salamat po. <laughs> siguro, uh, Asik Susan, the problem here is yung bilis ng paglift without um, without any um, prior uh, notice sa lahat ng mga nandito. Kasi what happened was uh, bigla eh. In most cases, of course, we have rapid deployment uh, uh, teams, pero normally, pag gera na, hindi pa nga, hindi pa nga tayo nakapagpaalis uh, ng tao eh. This time, the problem is a political problem, not a labor problem, between Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and uh, other small uh, allies of Saudi Arabia. And Qatar by itself is the most liberal um, country in the Middle East, among the islands there, among the countries there. And we have about 230,000 Filipinos in Qatar, right? So medyo, the tendency of Filipinos is to go to Qatar, dahil Qatar will also be, by the way, will become the host of the next um, FIPA. And they are rushing all the work there to finish the facilities. So nabigla yung mga Filipino dito na, oy, mawawalan tayo ng trabaho, e, mukhang wala namang wala namang nangyayari doon ang problema politika naman hindi naman labor but uh, i think that's the only problem there but what i um, get from amelo is the sensitivities of the arabs is i i can assure it's really true it's they are really very sensitive into that so i hope that uh, nung naglift ba tayo no nag uh, implement tayo ng ban did we inform the Qatari government that officially that we are suspending it for 
a few days or for a few hours, or we just advise our own people here. That's, that is the one that keeps me worried. Uh-huh. Kasi kung tayo lang, we just immediately advise our people, medyo sensitivities would really be uh, so, felt hard. And this is a um, big diplomatic nuance that we have to uh, understand. So that's why I thought that the lifting or the um, the ban the ban should have really been uh, announced by both the Secretary of Labor and the Secretary of Foreign Affairs together, rather than the Secretary of Labor, because the problem is political, and we have no news whether our laborers were really affected. Okay. If you notice the next day, uh, the food problem, uh, other countries in the Middle East uh, started um, supplies of food. Also, um, I, I have to mention this, because I have been there several times on the problems of our Middle East uh, people there. One of the most, uh, um, how would you call that, uh, influential uh, group in, in the Middle East with regards to Philippine organizations, SIU, the Migrante. And they are not that uh, uh, harsh towards government policies. When I was uh, in charge of Middle East policies and migrant workers in the Middle East during the time of former President, um, Vice President uh, Binay, I utilized a lot the migrante, as well as the groups of Tuts Ople. I'm just uh, uh, hoping that Tuts will be here later on. So maybe any policy that we are going to do on the implementing or the lifting, we should have really done it to them. I was asking Migrante earlier whether they participated in the one country team approach. Okay. So anyway, um, I hope that this is a lesson for us. So, That's really you know, something that we yeah. have to... So you will agree that uh, there will be a great difference had we made uh, representations with the embassy here before we announced it. Yes, I thought that if we made representations, I think that we would have been advised to stay put for a while because uh-huh. it's the country that will determine the danger of foreigners in their own uh, boundaries. Yeah. Okay, so it is problematic when the embassy would learn of the decision according to page one of Philippine Daily Inquirer or Manila Bulletin or ABS-CBN or GMA-7? Well, I think uh, the way I look at uh, Secretary Bebot's pronouncement or the Secretary of Labor's pronouncement is just really a matter of um, administrative problems that you may have overlooked. But uh, with regards to the report of the country team approach, they would have, uh, I think, uh, advised everybody, the public here, because it's the families that are worried here, not the workers uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in Qatar. So I think it's really more of an administrative aspect rather than policy. The policy is there, but it was not properly discussed by all the players to be able to conform with the, the rules of the country team approach. Okay. In hindsight, uh, sabi nila, hindsight will always offer a perfect vision. No? So, kung sakaling magkakaroon ng ganito, dapat talaga may assessment tayo. Well, I DFA think there was an assessment, the, but DFA then, should play an important role. Yes, I think, but then the the the, the, the thing that should have really been done is that uh, just like the typhoon, signal number one kamuna, number two, pag number three olipad na kay lahat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Pero pag number three ka kagad, eh wala namang bagyong dumating. So medyo may sardinas naman. <laughs> yun. Mao <laughs> yun ang pagkakaiba. No? Anong pananaw ng migrante sa nangyari? Kung sa sitwasyon po sa Qatar talagang una din, no? dahil nandito kami sa Pilipinas, nag-alala no? doon sa mga panic buying at lahat-lahat. Pero syempre dahil nakipag-coordina rin naman kami doon sa chapter ng Migrant International sa Qatar, di nabigyan naman ng, ano, ng update ano ba talaga yung nagaganap. At sinabi naman din na hindi pa ganun katindi katulad nung mga uh, na report o parang hindi naman talaga papunta sa isang sitwasyon na magkakaroon ng isang krisis. No? Although talagang nangangamba kami 
na maaaring mapunta doon dahil alam na natin eh, yung mga diplomatic relations dyan sa, sa uh, Middle East talagang medyo uh, nagkakaroon talaga ng mga escalation at mabilis ang pagbabago. Kaya kung sa amin po, ta ang hinahanap talaga namin, paano yung pagkakaroon ng paghahanda ng ating gobyerno. Okay, pakibababa lang ng mikropono na babasag eh. Anyway, <laughs> ilan lang tao ninyo ron na hiningan nyo ng datos o ng impormasyon? Uh, ang migrante po doon ay mayroong isang chapter, no? yung samahan ng mga manggagawa sa Qatar. At uh, karamihan po sa kanila ay mga nasa iba't ibang mga construction sites at uh, mga, mga uh, domestic helpers. No? Sa kanila actually, nas nahirapan din po kami makakuha agad ng information kasi mayroon ding agad ng mga uh, pag, uh, pagbabar no? sa pag, pagbibigay ng information sa mga kamag-anak nila papunta dito sa Pilipinas at uh, actually kahit sa social media o sa publiko. Kaya nahirapan din sila magbigay kaagad ng update. Ayun. At uh, sa kanila naman, pagkatapos nga din po nung ilang araw, di, ang mas pinakapangambahan pa nila yung aftermath eh, nung diplomatic uh, ties severation nung ano. No? Kasi yun nga, yung epekto sa trabaho nila. Dahil halimbawa yung mga construction workers, marami sa mga supplies nila, ay nakukinukuha doon sa mga bansa nga uh, nabanggit no Saudi Arabia, Bahrain at ano. At uh, malamang no hindi magtatagal kung hindi maggaganda yung kalagayan ay magkakaroon talaga ng epekto doon sa mga trabaho nila. Yeah. Kaya ako na itanong yan, uh, karamihan ng magagandang bilag ng Pilipinas nasa Qatar Airways, no? Mga stewardess, mga bisor, no? At uh, kung mababawasan yung biyahe dahil sa hindi ka na pupunta ron sa Bahrain, sa Egypt, at hindi ka pwedeng lumipad doon sa airspace ng Saudi Arabia, malaking problema ito. At baka maaaring mawalan ng trabaho yung ilan nating kababayan. Kaya nga po talagang may, ano, no, matindi yung pangamba ng mga kababayan natin doon. At uh, yung inaabangan nga po namin talaga sa gobyerno, yung sinasabi nga natin, hindi naman... Natutuwa kami na, na idinideklara ng gobyerno na talagang may paghahanda silang ginawa at uh, ang hinihintay naman po namin ay eh yung ano po ba yung konkretong mga hakbangin. Kasi po halimbawa yung sa issue nun, nung Qatar Airways, uh, sa amin po, yun nga po yung mga members namin, pinapangamba nila yung sa construction, halimbawa paano yung, ano, ano, yung sa labor situation nila doon. Uh, ano, pa, ano po ba yung magiging efekto nung akafala uh, system doon sa halimbawang mag-escalate yan sa repatriation? Mabilis ba tayo makakapag-repatriate? Kasi po ang pinapangamba nila, marami po doon sa mga manggagawa doon galing ng Libya. Eh. May galing po doon ng uh, uh, crisis areas na sa Middle East. May, may karanasan po sila kung paano ang naghir, naghirap silang makakuha ng uh, assistance sa gobyerno sa panahon ng repatriation at evacuation doon sa mga crisis areas na yun sa ibang parte ng Middle East. Yeah. Kayo po, eh, isa sa mga akda ng uh, Migrant yeah, Workers Act. I think the problem with uh, Qatar, uh, yung airways is not a problem dahil nag re lang sila eh. And the flight between Doha and uh, Riyadh is not that frequent. Uh, very, uh, the, the most of them travel by land. And uh, Qatar, I think, rerouted their, all their flights out of Saudi Arabia uh, and all the other small countries out to uh, China, US, and even here in Asia. But the main problem really there was on the construction. We have several uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, temporary Philippine workers. And what they're scared of is kung nadiretso yung lifting natin. There's no uh, a replacement is ready from the Indonesian the side. lifting or yung ban? The ban. The ban. Oh. If the ban has continued, there's a big uh, group ready from Indonesia and, and, and Thailand and Vietnam to take over the, the work. Uh -huh. But uh, because the Filipinos speak English very well, so... They are hoping that it will not uh, be for long. And I'm glad that uh, we did that after a week long. No? Now we, we implement again, the, um, we continue the, the deployment of workers. Now, although it is a primary um, responsibility of government to protect its workers, and things like this, as embodied in the Migrant Workers Act, should really be, uh, government should really be very, very sensitive to situations like this. But as I said, it has to be done in a step-by-step -step process, in the immediate. 
Kasi pag naging immediate ka, ay yung ka-partner natin ng mga bansa na nagbibigyan ng trabaho sa atin will always um, be fearsome that a minor disturbance uh, internal in the host country, we are going to react right away. So, medyo maafektuhan din yung um, performance ng kanilang ekonomiya because we have to also understand and realize that the Filipinos are not only overseas Filipino workers, but they are number one aspects to be considered in the progress, economic progress of the country where they're working. Whatever kind of work they do there, they really contribute a lot. That's why we, we really contribute a lot of uh, workers to, uh, of, of, of income to the economy of many countries our yes. workers are in. Uh, I remember uh, an Asian proverb. Was it a Vietnamese proverb which goes, uh, when water buffaloes quarrel, it is the grass that takes the effects or the ill effects. Uh, all these countries are influential and powerful and moneyed and all of these countries have Filipino workers. No? In fact, Banco Central ng Pilipinas cited the remittances from these countries to be sky high so far. 22? $22 billion? Uh, the total, uh, well, if you compare the $29 billion remittances in 2016, 22.34% come from the, the four East. countries. The Middle East. Four countries lang. Yeah. Oo. Ano po ang ating pwedeng gawin pa sa sitwasyon ngayon? Okay, um, yun kung bina binanggit ng ating kasama kanina no, na kailangan when we say handa tayo, handa tayo. Well, this is not, I mentioned that this is not the first time that we are experiencing this uh, concern. So the government has already put in place our reintegration program our assist 12 program and even yung ating mga yung tinatawag natin na tracking system on the progress of assistance provided to them um, magandang banggitin din natin um, ang middle east we all admit this is the top destination and the bulk of OFWs are really there and primarily the concern of the government is the protection of every filipino worker while we fully understand that going ag abroad is looking for greater and greener pasture, more opportunities, but at the end of the day, ang tinitingnan pa rin natin yung kapakanan, yung protection ng magagawang Pilipino. So pag may mga ganitong crisis as what happened uh, in the case of Qatar, no, while we were still observing, but it was more of a preventive measure that was done at the level of the Department of Labor. Kasi imagine, Kung, kung if the situation escalated at hindi kaagad natin siya kahit paano tiningnan muna kung magpapadala ba tayo, how many more workers would be there? How many more workers would be needing repatriation? So at least ito, nung nalinaw na kaagad natin na uh, okay naman lahat, close coordination with the Qatar government, close coordination with our embassy, with Polo, nilip ka agad ng ating secretary yon. So, medyo magaan yung loob, medyo hindi tayo ganung kinakabahan na baka pag pinayagan natin, lalo na ang mga new hires I mentioned earlier. But of course, it's a continuing uh, review of the process as mentioned by Ambassador na kailangan ni -re review natin yung mga process. So, for every crisis that happens, for any problem that, that uh, arises, definitely yung assessment of what has been done uh, what, what what mattered uh, during the, those period? Ano nangyari? Meron, are, were there lessons learned? Anong kailangan pa nating improve dun sa ating servisyo? So, yung mga projections, uh, nangyari din yan eh, nung, nung unang nagkaroon tayo ng crisis, uh, Middle East because of the oil price uh, decline. So, nung palang pre-project na natin, if ever na mangyari yon at itong sa Qatar mangyari, how many Filipinos would be affected. Mahalaga ho kasi yun eh. Yung datos ng projection natin, ilang ba ang possible na maapektuhan. At kung ito yung volume na maapektuhan, uh, what is our absorptive capacity? What is our safety net program? So ito po ay nakalatag naman na ho yan ngayon. In fact, under the ASIS Wealth Program, kaya nga if if most of you, I think most of you are now familiar with what ASIS Wealth Program is. So pag 
pagdating pa lang doon sa polo, tinitingnan na nila yan, may projection na yan, at naka-coordinate naka na kaagad yan dito sa Dole Family of Agencies. And when I say Dole Family of Agencies, kasama na ho ang OWA dyan, kasama na ho ang POA, coordinated na rin ho yan with our recruitment, private recruitment agencies. Although may datos tayo, but we want to be sure na itong datos natin at kung ano yun nandun sa aktual na private recruitment agencies, magkatugmayan. And in fact, the private recruitment agencies are, are mandated. They are tasked to ensure that they closely monitor the wealth, the, the situation of the workers. So, merong kaagad koordinasyon yan. Ito bang worker na ito ay nando doon yan? Nandun ba yan sa employer na yan? At ano naman yung safety nets na nakahanda natin? So, pagdating pa lang nila dito sa airport, andyan na ang OWA natin na sumasalubong sa kanila at uh, hinahanda na ho yung mga pangangailangan. Andyan din yung National Reintegration Center for OFWs natin. Andyan din po yung ating uh, sistema for yung job referral natin. So, based doon ho sa kakayahan ng, ng worker, sa competencies niya, sa skills niya, experience niya, uh, we, we do job uh, skills matching also okay. in coordination with a private recruitment agent if they still opt to work abroad. O kung dito naman ho sa Pilipinas, uh, tinitingnan din ho natin saan ba natin sila pwedeng ma-refer para as a stopgap, pwede silang magtrabaho. Kung magustuhan naman nila, dito tuloy-tuloy na okay. nila. Uh, I remember talking to Sunny Africa of Ebon Foundation and he said that uh, workers will remain in the Middle East but the prospects are not as bright because of the nationalization programs of uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and other Middle Eastern countries. And not only that, uh, the stiff competition we get from other labor exporting countries. Uh, considering the fact that uh, Filipino workers accept higher wages than other countries, no? So, this may uh, be, uh, you know, not as good as what it used to be. Because historically, we all know that the oil boom brought thousands of Filipinos to the Middle East. But today, the playing field has changed. What would you have to say about it? Okay, well, understandably, these are the situations that have been happening. These are the situations that we have also been monitoring. So, may mga nakabalik na dito sa atin, may mga na-repatriate na rin sa atin. But uh, I think it is hindi naman to the point that it will cause panic that there will be no need anymore for Filipino workers. And there are other markets din na tinitingnan natin, na possible uh, that where the uh, the skilled workers if they are interested to can 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 possibly be deployed but uh alalahanin natin na uh, ang trust din ng ating gobyerno ngayon di ba to to bring home back our our OFWs at uh, to provide better opportunities here maaring hindi pa ngayon lahat nangyayari yan but the vision that we have under Ambition 2040, kasama na rin ho dyan yung siguraduhin natin na darating yung panahon. No? Tabi nga ng ating uh, nababasa natin yan, naririnig natin yan, paulit-ulit na sinasabi po ng ating Pangulo na at yung ating mga manggagawang Pilipino ay magkaroon na ng option, no? talagang, talagang real option na magstay na dito sa atin. Hin sa tingin naman natin, this is not just the work of the government alone. Uh, ito ho ay partnership sa private sector, partnership sa investment. So pinagtutulong-tulungan po natin yan. Uh, we understand there are some apprehensions, kaya... Lahat tayo nagmo-monitor sa situation. Uh, nangyayari ngayon yung sa iba't ibang bansa na nakikita natin na tinitingnan din nila yung kapakanan ng kanilang mga sariling uh, employ uh, employees, yung mga sariling workers na bago makakuha sa iba, tingnan muna. But we all know that it, it takes time also, di ba? Um, learning and uh, gaining and acquiring the skills it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. So, may mga preparations din sila na ginagawa at meron din naman tayo mga preparations na kailangan gawin at pagtulong-tulungan. Okay. Ano man yung mga ambisyon 2040? Ano ba tingin ng migrante ron? Bangungot nga ba? <laughs> Yun nga po ang aming pinag-aalala. Ano po? 
Despite po kasi doon sa deklarasyon ni Pangulong Duterte na wawakasan niya eh, yung ugat ng migrasyon at uh, magkakaroon na ng option nga yung mga kababayan natin na manatili dito, na wawala pa po yung clear roadmap paano ito aabutin. At yung ambition 2040 po ay ang suri po namin ay eh, hindi po yan magriresulta ng pagrerepat pag-uwi ng mga kababayan natin dito. Unang-una po, kaya po dinudugtuan ko rin po yung sinasabi po ni ASEC na Mahalaga po talaga reviewin yung mga implementation ng mga policies. At actually po, uh, pinapanawagan na namin talagang i-review talaga yung RA 8042, yung Migrant Workers Act. Kasi 22 years na po ito. No? At uh, nung June 7 po ito, umabot ng 22 years. Ang ini-envision po actually nitong Migrant Workers Act ay wakasan yung forced migration at uh, ma-integrate yung mga kababayan nating nasa abroad pa uwi dito sa Pilipinas. Pero after 22 years po ng implementation yan, lumaki po ang bilang ng mga kababayan nating nasa abroad. At kung policy at policy rin po ng government natin, hinahanap pa nga po namin eh, paano mapipigilan itong labor export policy na sa ngayon nga po eh, talaga nagpapatuloy pa rin. No? Kung yeah, ang POEA, at magkakaroon ng department. Opo, May na nagpanukalang nga. magaling na mambabatas, nagawa ng department o, no? Na so, tala nga institutionalize natin. Oo, natila nga po, parang forever nang may uh, migration sa ating bansa na imbis na wakasan nga, no? At makakreate ng jobs dito sa Pilipinas at hindi na mag-abroad yung mga kababayan natin. Bakit tayo mag-institutionalize ng isang departamento? Pero yun nga po, ang sabi din naman namin, maganda rin naman kung may Department of OFWs, kung ay, ang layunin niyan ay serbisyohan ng mas mahusa yung ating mga kababayan. Pero sabi nga po namin, talagang ang kailangan, ang ating bisyon ay paano natin pauuwiin yung ating mga kababayan at magkasama-sama na tayo dito sa Pilipinas okay. ng namumuhay na mga Hindi pa natin pinag-uusapan yung social costs ng migration. No? Hindi pa yun. We, 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 will, we will set another session for that. We'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media for your questions. Please identify yourself and the entity you come from and go ahead with your question. No privilege speeches, please. Good morning. Uh, Juvie de Guzman po from DWBL. Gusto ko lang pong matanong ang migrante. Meron ho ba tayong kagaya ng, uh, ng ginagawa noon ng ating dating ambassador na si Roy Sinieres sa Middle East? Kasi alam niyo po, naging uh, tatakpo niya yung pagiging uh, hands-on sa sitwasyon. Gusto ko pang malaman sa inyo kasi yung pagiging hands-on ng isang ambassador na representing at the host country, yun po yung pinakamadaling paraan para matumbok yung problema. Di ho ba? Tanong ko lang po, sir. Uh, yung Migrante International po ay isang mass organization ng mga uh, migrant workers sa ibang bansa. Ano? At uh, kami po, kung hands-on at hands-on po, talagang grassroots level po ang aming operasyon. Ibig sabihin po, nagtatayo po kami ng mga Filipino communities kung saan po maraming mga Pilipino. At uh, tinitiyak po namin na yung mga boses nila ay natitipon doon sa organisasyon na aming itinatayo. At yun yung aming ipinapadala, pabalik dito sa Pilipinas at napag-uusapan ng kanilang mga kalagayan. Yun po yung dahilan kung bakit din sa mga sitwasyon, sa mga kalagayang huling nagaganap sa mga iba't ibang bansa, ay nakakapaglabas kami ng mga pahayag at mga reports kung ano talaga yung kalagayan mga OFWs. Dahil po, dumenediretso po kami sa ulat ng mga kababayan natin, lalong-lalo na po doon sa mga membro at leader namin sa Pero ang tanong kasi, meron ba mga ambassador na tulad noon na mayapang Roy Sinieres na talagang hands-on? Apo. Ayun meron po. ba? Uh, actually po, wala pa tayong ulit nakikita ng uh, ganun no at uh, yun nga po doon sa review po ng uh, uh, policies ng government mas tinitingnan nga po namin paano makakuha ng mga best practices eh pwede natin siguro tignan kung may mga best practices po si Ambassador Reyes Roy Sinieres tignan natin paano siya gagayahin ng iba pang mga ambassadors natin eh may nakakabalita ka po ng sex for flight uh, Mr. Ambassador you were once an ambassador no uh, in fairness to my colleagues Yeah. Uh, ambassador Sinieres was a labor attache before he became an ambassador. And he really knows the problem Everything. of OFWs, of our Filipino workers, where he was assigned. And if you notice, he was only assigned there. Unfortunately, he's gone. Yeah. And uh, he was also a political ambassador. So he couldn't be moved from one place to another. 
But uh, in fairness to our ambassadors, that's still the primary duty of the Philippine ambassadors to be uh, on hand yeah. you know, on everything. Except that if you look at the job of an ambassador, that's actually protection of Filipino workers is actually only one eighth of his job. Apo. Because the more important is the interest of the country, the Philippines, so the country where it's assigned. And that is a political matter, much, much deeper than what we see. That's why we have attaches, labor, trade. They do help the ambassador understand the situation of labor and trade or agriculture or whatever uh, field in that country. But the general aspect of that, the ambassador is the one really looking at a much deeper problem that would have to be protected between the Philippines and the country that they represent. Para kay ASEC, ASEC, uh, alam po natin, uh, bago lang po kayo. Uh, kasi OFW din po ako. Nafe-feel ko lang, bakit po itinutuloy ang pagpapadala sa, sa Middle East? Samantalang ang dami hong mga unsolved problems sa Middle East na mga nakakarating po doon. At ngayon nga po, marami po kaming mga tao kasi yung program po namin, it's more on OFW, marami po kaming na-encounter na ng mga tawag na humihingi ng tulong from there na hindi ho nakakarating sa ating uh, mga dapat kaukulan. Sa kinaukulan, rather. Okay, uh, sa salamat sa inyong tanong. Actually, I'm, I'm not really new as in new in the field, no? I, I've been in the dollar for 30 years and I was... Uh, you started young, no? Uh, you were <laughs> elementary <laughs> graduate? <laughs> 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 I was with the POEA, you know, for five years as deputy administrator. Okay. Th that's, one, that's one question no, that um, has always been in the mind of almost everybody and even policymaker and even us in the government. But we have to look at the bigger picture, no? Uh, hindi naman pwedeng may nangyaring ganitong insidente, sasaraduhan mo na ang lahat ng opportunities. What we have been doing uh, in partnership with other stakeholders, even workers' organizations and uh, employers and recruitment agencies, we continuously review our policy, our guidelines, our rules. Uh, remember that POA rules and regulations have been uh, ha was revised, um, I think, a year or two years ago, because uh, to ensure that the realities on the ground uh, should be factored in, because the original 2002 rules it was issued a long time ago. The situation there then at that at that time may be. Uh, different, uh, so much different from what is happening. So, kailangan pag nag, na, sa, sa policy ho kasi, tinitingnan natin yung kabuan. Opo. So, side by side with that continuing policy to, to continuously providing uh, overseas employment as an option, di ba yun naman ang nasa policy natin as an option, tinitingnan din ang buong pamahalaan, yung possibility na talagang matupad natin yung gusto natin, that it becomes a genuine option. Na kung aalis ka dahil gusto mo for your development, uh, for the good of your family, hindi dahil sa kailang kailangan mo na at wala ka ng ibang option. Kaya ito nga ngayon sa panahon ng ating uh, administration, tinitingnan paano ba papaula rin din tayo yung, yung tinatawag natin na domestic employment, uh, inward development, sabay-sabay ho kasi natin. Can you imagine kung nagkaroon ng isindente tapos in-stop natin lahat yung mga opportunities? Okay. Sayang din naman yung pagkakataon ng mga kababayan natin na maipakita rin yung galing nila diba, sa ibang bansa magamit. And when they come back also, pwede rin nating magamit yung kakayahan na natutunan nila at mas lalo pa nilang napaunlad nung nandutuun ho Ma sila. Nagulat ako, 30 years na pala kayo sa VOA. Siguro uh, it... Buong dole po. Opo. Pero po, dole. Gusto, gu dole. <laughs> gusto ko lang pong matanong lang po sa behalf din ng mga agency, no? Kasi laging natututukan ng POA na dole yung mga tao, mga manpower. Hindi ko ba sumagi sa isip nyo na may problema din yung mga agency sa mga pinaalis nila? Kasi parang laging nagpe-penalty lang po yung mga agency. So yun lang po, sana po mabigyan nyo ng pansin. Okay. 
Uh, maraming salamat. No, gusto ko lang tugunan din yon. Uh, siguro hindi lang hu alam ng karamihan. No, sa POE hu kasi napakahigpit ng paglilisensya at pag at napaka may process of course we have to observe two process when revoking or when canceling or suspending licenses marami ho tayong mga ahensya na nagkaroon ng problemang ganon at dumaan yan sa proseso na maring na cancela na suspinde yung kanilang hong uh, lisensya so at may mga cases po na final ang OFW na yun ating mga resulta were really in favor of the OFW. But of course, dapat balance tayo, di ba? Kung, kung kailangan na i-absuelto dahil base sa investigasyon at tamang proseso, walang naging lapses, of course. Pero kung nagkaroon naman ng lapses, of course, we do not think twice uh, to impose the penalty. At kabahagi na nga ho nung tinatawag natin, that's, that's the regulatory part eh. Ang mahalaga rin sa atin yung developmental aspect, no? Yung pati mismong OFW at pamilya nila, we continuously educate them. Nandi dito pa lang si OFW, hindi pa siya umaalis, may mga education programs na tayo at paghahanda para sa kanila at para din po sa pamilya nila. Okay. Thank Paano you. kasi may binanggit doon na yun daw pera ng OFW na uwi lang sa SM? 10% lang yun na uwi sa bulsa dahil kakain, bibili ng appliance, pag may sobrang konti, bibili ng condominium. So, matitira 10%. Yes, please. May gusto lang po kayo dagdag doon sa ni-raise po nung isang kasama kanina. No? Yung sa usapin kung bakit dapat ba i-monitor o paano i-regulate yung ating mga private recruitment agencies. Uh, Naka-embody po kasi sa RA 8042, Section 29 at Section 30 po nung batas, yung phasing out ng regulatory function ng ating gobyerno sa mga private recruitment agencies. Ang nakalagay po doon ay strictly relationship between labor and the, la the employer yung uh, deployment ng mga OFWs. At sa karanasan po natin, ito po yung pinakamalaking panganib na din dinadanas po ng mga kababayan natin. Dahil nag-phase out ang regulatory functions, hinahayaan yung mga recruitment agency kung paano yan mag-operate, mag-monitor ng kanilang mga uh, i-deploy. At kadalasan po, kahit po yung mga services na ibinibigay ng gobyerno dapat na direct link sila sa kanila dapat natatanggap, ay naipapasa doon sa mga recruitment agencies at employer. Kaya okay. nagkakaroon ng kahirapan doon yung mga manggagawa natin na makapag-assert kaagad sa government. Okay. Can I also add to that? Please. Uh, with regards to the phasing out of regulatory power, this is also in answer to the a request of our partner countries. If you remember, Ami, when we were working on this at the POAA, that's one of the things that they were asking, especially before the imposition of the Southeast So, binigyan natin ng leeway itong mga um, recruitment agencies, although they are very, they're getting their license so difficult uh, process, pero uh, binigyan naman natin sila ng leeway. Now, I would also like to comment on the previous questions. Uh, there are several misconceptions here that I have noticed. First, sinabi, uh, of course, we have to welcome another pillar of the OFW. Welcome, welcome. Join uh, us. Touch. Please. Thank you, thank touch you. Pointing. Yeah. Uh, number one misconception is, sinasabi, lahat ng mga problema nanggagaling sa Saudi Arabia or sa Middle East. Uh, first, I would like to say it is not true. Mas marami lang sigurong naririnig na problema galing sa Saudi Arabia dahil mas vocal yung mga tao doon. Because, but if you are going to look at the statistics in the Middle East, yung mga Category A workers natin, engineers, nurses, doctors, in other words, we call them professional workers, wala tayong problema doon. Ang problema natin yung mga household at saka tinatawag natin na, im, na um, uh, uh, undocumented or domestic. Yeah. Uh, hindi naman sila problema per se. But ang problema, the, the, the problem here is they are more mobile at hindi permanent yung kanilang trabaho. Like, I am the one person who don't believe that we have illegal workers or undocumented. How can you get out of the country kung wala kang dokumento? Ang problema, walang kontrata at nagbumove from one country to another country. 
At sila yung hindi permanente yung kanilang trabaho. At ang violation normally between them and the employer are those in the category B type of work. Because if you look at the other countries outside of the Middle East, like the United States of America, we have more problems in the category A prob um, work there. How many teachers are being, whose contracts are being violated in the United States of America? Three, four years ago, I had to attend the hearings of about 50 teachers. Uh, na, um, recruited well, lahat, lahat, pagdating doon, ano nangyari sa kanila? Now, if you go to other countries, our neighbors, I, th I think we should just really be, be happy that our people in the Middle East, whether they are category A or category B, are more vocal in protecting their rights. That's why you get more calls from them. Yeah, and if you listen to Toots um, um, program on radio, they are all calls like that. So we have to look at all of this. And then I think uh, the best thing here is um, relationship that has to be reviewed all the time. It's not only how the DFA or how labor is doing the regulatory supervision of our, our workers and their contracts, but the workers themselves, before they leave, should also be able to see to it that they're ready to go into the field and be able to protect their own rights. Now, with regards to the, the this is my thesis when I was taking my master's degree on the uh, workers, spending 20 years abroad, pagdating dito, wala pa ring pera. Because the problem in this country, I found out, it was that, and all of us, whether we are OFWs or not, tayo lahat dito, if I have to ask you that question, how much money you have in the bank? Huh? We have not trained our people from the maliliit pa, how to save. I remember when I was small, my parents taught me to get those stamps in the post office as uh -huh. savings. Eh ngayon, saan pumupunta? Di ba sa load? Uh -huh. So, bawat tao ba dito may pera? Kaya, nangyayari sa labor natin, pagdating dito, pumupunta sa SM yung pera. Tama. All right. Uh, question mo muna bago natin pa pagsalita si Toots. Yes, please. Good morning, Cecil Ardizabal po from CNN Philippines. I'd, I have a question to ask. Uh, I'd like just to ask for clarification. Can we say that at this point in time, the government is already anticipating uh, deployment from Qatar of Filipinos? Deployment to Qatar. Are, are you deployment. referring to deployment? Yeah, deployment. Well, actually, I mentioned earlier that uh, the secretary has already lifted no, the moratorium. So definitely, continuous yung deployment natin. Uh -huh. Because you mentioned some of the conting contingencies also. Yes. And yeah. And uh, from your latest monitoring, ma'am, um, what have you mo monitored so far on uh, Filipinos or if there is such a thing, Filipinos uh, who were um, laid off from work? Well, actually, based on the information provided to us, uh, there is no such specific um, information as you are mentioning right now. Otherwise, uh, we would not have lifted the temporary moratorium immediately. So what, whatever we do is actually based on uh, close monitoring and coordination with the Polo and the Embassy and, of course, the DFA. And I mentioned also earlier that uh, the Secretary, at, at, the, at the instance no, of that uh, severance of uh, diplomatic ties, immediately convened a, a crisis management committee to assess the, to assess the situation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tell us the latest thoughts. Yeah, um, siguro three things kasi, I, I, first, of course, I apologize for being late. No, it's a traffic. Yeah. It's okay. No, I'm not really a morning person. Alam mo naman yun, Melo. Anyway, first yung sa Qatar. Um, what we have monitored uh, um, based on conversations with our OFWs in Qatar, tumaas lang ng konti yung presyo ng uh, bilhin, especially the vegetables. Kasi most of them naman are imported. But there are no food shortages. In fact, nagugulat daw sila dahil may mga goods na bumaba pa yung presyo. So, um, yung uh, specter of magkakaroon ng food riots, obviously wala na yun kasi um, goods are 
coming in from Turkey, from Oman, and other um, neighboring countries. No? And um, ang, ang fear then na baka maabandon yung mga domestic workers, no, mga uh, kung yung kanilang mga employers ay Egyptians or um, Saudis, Saudi nationals and, and uh, Bahrainis. Um, the the uh, Qatar government has assured uh, foreign nationals, no, not just the Filipinos, but that um, as long as they have legal documents such as yung kanilang um, permanent ID, uh -oh, um, they will be allowed to transfer to other employers. And in Qatar, Filipino workers are so valued that um, the recruitment agencies that we have talked to that are based in Qatar said they see no problem in um, helping uh, OFWs look for other employers in case, although we have not received any reports of stranded OFWs in Qatar, um, generally they are quite happy there. Everything is normal and we thank uh, the Qatari government for their assurance to Dole and we also thank Dole for finally lifting the suspension and we hope and pray that next time perhaps it can be a joint declaration um, instead of a unilateral uh, announcement of any suspension of deployment. Second, yung sa, tuhugin ko na, second is yung sa Saudi. Um, actually, that's more uh, a matter of concern for us in the uh, civil society circles because uh, the nation without violations campaign or the amnesty period the 90 day amnesty period given by the saudi government is about to end and um and uh, we are urging our workers to avail of the amnesty uh, they have different passport departments all over saudi arabia uh, they can um, apply for amnesty there and also for the government to start preparing for the crackdown that usually takes place after any amnesty period um, uh, is over and done with. So, ngayon, final stage na, uh, according to the DFA, 12,000 OFWs have availed of the amnesty, 2,000 have gone home, there are 4,000 with exit visas, and, um, and, and I think with the air tickets provided by DFA OMWA, but there are still some Filipinos, a lot of them. Some of them have even the most minor case, traffic violations, for example, credit card uh, problems. Yung mga yan, mahirapan sila because of their cases. No? So, dapat ma-resolve muna yung cases na yan. So, we are urging all the Filipinos na without ikama, those who have um, expired ikamas, and, and those who have relocated from other countries without the necessary papers, to avail of the amnesty period. Last na lang, last na. Please. <laughs> we would like to appeal to the DFA and DOLE our OFWs would like to send their own letters and postcards to the troops in Marawi. But we would like to appeal, I'm glad ASEC is here, if every OWA welfare um, officer and all our diplomatic posts can open their doors so that OFWs can just mail their letters to the embassy instead of physically going there, and then the Philippine embassies from Sudan to Stockholm can just gather all these postcards and letters and forward them to the DFA here in, um, in, in Manila. Because from the initial feedback that um, the Ople Center has received, especially those in the conflict zones then, no, they, they would like to send messages of uh, support and, uh, and, and hope 
to our soldiers. So yung hashtag Ogop Marawi ng Philippine Army, we hope it can become global so that our OFWs can also help out. Then I hope Dole can, can also facilitate that. Yeah, maganda, magandang idea yon. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it will boost their morale aside from the trolls. Okay. May tanong? Yes, please. Oh, we have a colleague from uh, Daily Manila Shimbun. <laughs> yes. Good morning. I'm Toru Morinaga from Daily Manila Shimbun. Uh, sir, well, ma'am, may I ask uh, if you feel, feel any necessity so far that workers in Middle East countries come back to and work in the Philippines in future because the situation in Middle East may go bad for OFW. And if so, what kind of action will you implement? Thank okay. you. Yeah, reintegration, no? You're yes, asking yes. about possible integration. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I th thank you for that question. Actually, I mentioned to you earlier that we have a reintegration program. And uh, the reintegration program of the government has been there uh, for some time, but uh, many of these uh, pro programs or uh, under, under the major na uh, reintegration programs have been uh, enhanced. And in fact, some of the packages have also been increased to help really the OFWs who intend to go back here, whether temporary or for good. No? So, but yung, uh, for workers uh, coming back because of the crisis, uh, it, it has been, um, we, we have already prepared a package for them under the Assist Well program and under the uh, OWA and the, the NRCO reintegration program. In fact, uh, one good thing about is that under the OWA Act, no, uh, the, the OWA Act, the NRCO is now really an official attached agency of the of OWA and that is a one way of uh, actually integrating uh, the programs for OFWs. Yes, uh, and part of the pa uh, part of the assistance being given to them, uh, livelihood programs uh, for those who would like to venture into uh, at least um, some bis small businesses. They can start with small businesses. They can be assisted individually or by group. But for those who intend to still be a wage uh, employee or a worker, we also do uh, skills uh, job matching. Um, with the assistance of the Bureau of Local Employment and uh, all the regional offices of the Department of Labor for those who would like to work here. But for those who intend to still go back, as uh, based on our data and experiences, many of those OFWs, once they are here, the intention, many of them still intend to go back, no? Because of, you know, uh, with some uh, salaries, that these are realities, no? Um, we also assist them, uh, and that is in partnership with our legitimate uh, licensed recruitment agencies also. Follow up? Okay. More questions from our colleagues? Pat? Susunod ka, Juvi. Ilaw, ilaw. Tama itin. Daily Tribune po, sir. Sir, ang tanong ko lang uh, sa whoever may answer this sa uh, panel. Nagdeklara po yung mga neighboring uh, Arab against Qatar. Meron pa kayang implication sa mga OFW naman natin sa loob ng mga bansa na yon? Magkakaroon po ba ng implikasyon? Baga... Well, the situation really is the same. Either in Qatar or in Saudi. We just really have to warn ang mga OFWs natin to be ready. Our embassy should also be ready to find out. Wala tayong pakialam sa away nila. Wala tayong pakialam sa huwag tayong sumasaw doon. But if we are affected, we just have to be ready that we are be, be able to live right away or be able to protect the safety of our citizens. Yes, please. I think what is important is that they just focus on their work. And they do everything to also support their employers because it's not an easy time in the region. Mo also, constant reminders for them to be careful regarding social media posts because these are being monitored. And the yeah. UAE government has already said that they will deport or even um, uh, put, 
put uh, behind bars yung mga nagpo-post na sympathetic to um, to Qatar no but ito away ng oh. magkakapatid oh. ito eh so w let's not take sides because they're all our partners and i support the call of former DFA undersecretary Rafael Segis for the government to take the position of strategic silence Wag na tayong magsalita, hindi naman natin away to. Let's just focus on helping our OFWs um, fulfill the demands of their contracts. Yeah, there is virtue in silence. Yeah. Okay. I just have one concern though yes. here. Um, this is really more on the Saudi side. What are the steps that you have taken in protecting the rights or the welfare of Filipinos whose employers were Qatari in Saudi? Nang nawala, for example, yung yeah. Saudi and yung Qatar uh, yung diplomatic airline. relations. They were given two weeks Oo, to vacate. So, umalis yung mga Saudi, mga Qatari. Ano nangyari sa Pilipino doon? Sinama ba nila? Sinama ba nila? Oh. Kasi it's so difficult in Saudi. Kasi marami ng Pilipino doon naghanap ng trabaho. In Qatar, ba, hindi problema ito because the Qatari government said, we will protect you. But how about those in other countries like Saudi, um, Bahrain, UAE? UAE. Mentioned ko kanina, kung ano yung ginagawa natin sa Qatar, exactly the same things that our polos and embassies are doing in other parts of Middle East. Kasi pag may pumutok na issue sa isang area, lahat yan naka-alerto na yan eh. So, minomonitor din natin if there have been reports already that uh, because of this uh, diplomatic uh, situation, some of the workers uh, have been... Um, out of job already, no? And because they are employers. Pero wala pa hong ganon na uh, sinasabi natin uh, to the point that we have to panic already. So, ang mahalaga ngayon sa ating lahat is one, we, we should all be vigilant with what is happening. Second, yung close monitoring as we have mentioned uh, between and among agencies uh, that are concerned and protecting the workers. Third, it is also very crucial the assistance of the civil society and also the the recruitment agencies and the employers themselves. At mahalaga rin ho yung role mismo ng ating mga workers. Sabi nga natin kanina, instead na uh, you use your energy uh, in in participating in this crisis in the first place, we are not involved. Dapat ang mahalagang gawin ng mga workers is yung precautions din nila, no? And also report to the recruitment agencies kung meron, kung sila ba ay naaapektuhan na. Uh, kung ano yung sitwasyon nila. You have to work closely with the recruitment agency. And the recruitment agencies have been repeatedly advised. And in fact, they are, they are really tasked under existing laws to closely monitor every, Pili every deployed Filipino worker. Wala pong excuse yun. Kailangan alam mo kung ano nangyayari dun sa worker na pinadala mo. At mag-focus lang ho ang, ang, ang workers natin sa trabaho nila. At kung may advisory, kasi kailangan abangan yung advisory ng ating embahada. Sundin natin kung ano po yung nasa advisory ng embahada. Huwag din tayong mag-assume masyado. At huwag din tayong magbigay ng kung ano-anong komentaro na hindi rin ho makakatulong. Sa sitwasyon po natin, mas mahalaga nga ho ngayon na mag-focus tayo. At at the same time, we, ha we also have to be very vigilant. Thank you. Ma more scenario, ma'am. Sandali or scenario, 230,000 OFW. Sa Qatar. May kakayanan ba tayong ano, ilip sila in a short period of time, repatriate? Uh, siguro ang masabi ko, hindi lang naman dole yun. No? It's an interagency. Oh, ano, no? Yung kakayahan, dole. syempre it takes a while. no? But meron ng Land mga contingency at repatriation. At naging experience na rin natin for several years. And I mentioned that when we anticipated before what would happen in case of the oil crisis situation. Mm. In fact, mas malaki nga yung pre-project noon ng buong gobyerno, yung paghahanda. paghahanda. So, ang Qatar, yung number na sinasabi ninyo is, diha, mas, hindi natin siya mamaliitin, no? Kasi, no. <laughs> diba, baka ma-misinterpret na minamaliit natin number, malaking number din ito. At kada isang Pilipino, kahit isa lang siya, mahalaga hong maproteksyonan yan. Ang sinasabi ko lang, yung ganong paghahanda, yung pagsis 
si scenario, noon mas uh, nakita natin na if ever that would push through the situation got worse, we have a bigger number. So, na, na, nag-ready na ho tayo ngayon. So, ngayon din, ganun din ang ginagawa natin. Kaya nga, sabi natin, wala pa naman, di ba, sabi, wala pa naman yung sitwasyon, ba't ganyan na yung pinepre... It, it's better to be prepared, di ba? Kaysa naman nandiyan na yung sitwasyon and then all of a sudden sabi natin, what happened? No one attended, no one anticipated, di ba? No, no one uh, no one guaranteed. No one uh, thought about the protection immediately. Walang nag-anticipate. Dapat proactive, di ba? Ganun ang mga sinasabi natin. Pag, so ngayon din, ganun din dapat. Magtulong-tulong tayo doon. Yes, dagdag. Ayun po, kami po sa migrante, yun nga po, talagang hinahanap po namin sa gobyerno yon yung koordinasyon sa mga OFWs doon, paano magtutulungan nga po yung mga Filipino communities Tapos, pinakamahalaga po kasi yung dapat alam nila yung what to do when this situation happen. No? Alert level 1, ganito dapat tayo. Uh, yun pa po yung kailangan nating pagtulungan at yun po talaga sa tingin ko yung sikapin natin na trabahuhin. Dahil po sa ngayon, no, ang takot po talaga ng mga migrante ay yung mag maulit yung mga kakulangan natin na sa pagresponde sa panahon ng krisis sa iba pang bansa na nangyari nung mga nakaraan taon. Yeah. Toots? ilagay lang natin sa tamang konteksto kasi kailangan maging responsable rin tayo. There is no even a shadow of a possibility of an invasion or any armed uh, conflict uh, erupting in the Middle East, specifically in Qatar. Kasi kaya nga this is a dispute being channeled through diplomatic means no and uh, turkey and uh, kuwait um, have been actively supporting dialogues for peace so sa tingin ko there's no country naman in the gulf region that would like to see the region a very prosperous mauwi sa sa war so tayo siguro yun yung idea behind the principle of strategic silence na Wag naman na sa atin pa magmula yung any hint of um, ano, uh, war uh, erupting because of this. Eh, yeah. eh, parang imposibleng mangyari. You know, should war escalate or should the war happen, the happiest would be those selling weapons. In fact, Qatar has already purchased something from the United States. So they're so happy, no? Kaya... Sabi nga, eh, pinakamasaya rito yung Merchants of War. More questions. Patty from Rappler, please. Uh, I know you have a question by the looks of it. Uh, sige. All right, let's have it. Sa pilitan ba yun? Uh, Pat, kita mo mga apo na natin yung nagko-cover ngayon. No? Okay, yes please. Um, actually, ma'am, may I ask lang po dun sa situation po nung household workers na employed po ng mga non-Katari. What are the problems we are expecting and uh, kung paano po sila siguro tatanggapin na ibang countries or repatriated? Sa, sa Qatar lang, kasi kausap ko yung kausap ko yung mga recruitment agencies na based sa Qatar. Sila yung nagsasabi, walang problema. Kasi nandun naman yung domestic workers, may mga kontrata at may mga IDs, dumaan sa legal process. So it's just, uh, ano, and so far, wala namang reports. Kami ha, ewan ko, syempre, government. Yes, may, may I also add, yung ating Polo has been coordinating closely with his with their counterpart. So pinag-uusapan na yun, o in case itong scenario na to mangyari, what would happen? At kung tama yung binabanggit kanina, eh, napakadali kasi i-monitor if one, if the worker is documented. Diba? Kaya like, we, we keep on saying, and it has been our advocacy, if we really want to work abroad, do it the right way, the legal way. Kasi mas madali kang i-monitor, mas, mas, uh, mas madali kang mabigyan kaagad ng necessary intervention, hindi ka kasi nagtatago. But, but so far nga, walang... Yung situation no, na kinakatakutan natin, wala namang ganun, wala namang ganun nangyayari. Ma'am, but for example, halimbawa, there are undocumented household workers. Kasi I believe dole to e e may estimates din ng undocumented workers in Qatar. Is there any intervention for them kasi sakaling uh -oh. may crisis? Ang, ang gobyerno naman ho natin, whether documented or undocumented, 
parehong Pilipino ho yan, sinusuportahan natin. In fact, based on our past experiences, those who were repatriated, many of them were undocumented. So, hindi natin iniiwanan uh, kahit ano pa ang sitwasyon ng kapwa Pilipino natin, especially so during crisis po. Uh, so, it's up to... Uh, sir, sorry. What if, what, what if we will have a policy na all undocumented will not be helped? Ano kaya mangyari? Uh, against the Constitution. It's unconstitutional. It's, that order, no? it's unconstitutional. That is our number one duty to protect our citizens. And I said earlier today, I, we do not believe that there is a Filipino who is not documented. How can you get out of your country anyway? Maybe it was fraudulently they, um, properly uh, they got the, the passport uh, some other way. Some other ways, uh, but still, there is a document that would prove that they are Filipino. Now, with regards to the question that you're asking, what happens to the workers, Filipino workers, of Qatari nationals, let's say in Saudi, because they're asked to come home, to go back to Qatar. Now, that is a diplomatic uh, arrangement in a third country. So the Qatar, Qatari employee, through the, the, the government, will have to ask the, um, a third country national or a third country office to take care of the responsibilities in Saudi. So whatever obligations they have left in Saudi will be taken care of through a third party. Okay. All right. Sige. Hindi, marami pa. Marami mo magtatanong. Hindi kay Ma'am Toots kasi... Uh, hindi siya natanong. Uh, good morning po, ma'am. I'm Juvi de Guzman. Gusto ko lang pong malaman, ma'am, kasi nananawagan po kayo for Marawi. Marawi, yung uh, pampagising ng kalaoban ng ating mga AFA and PNP. Pwede po bang gawin natin na mga celebrity ang mag, ano, is, yung dagdag tulong, mga artist. Alam nyo po, meron po bang celebrity kayong nalalaman na nagpunta ho doon just for that. Kasi po, meron po akong nakausap na mga NGOs na talagang very much willing silang mag magpunta din doon. At yung iba nakarating na po doon and they end up with a very good result sa panawagan for morale. I, I think civic duty ng lahat eh. Okay. So, um, to support our soldiers and even the families of our soldiers, lalo na yung mga namatayan, no? whether Opo. celebrity o hindi celebrity. You know? um, of course, in the U.S., nangyayari yan that celebrities come together, stage an, a fundraising event, pero nasa kanila yun eh. Uh, yeah, yung, we can invite uh, uh, Mocha, who has a number of followers. <laughs> no, but... but yeah, to, serious, I'm serious. Yes, actually, serious. dito sa hashtag Ogop Marawi, she can play uh, an important role, ano? Kasi she's part of the PCO. So in a official capacity, she can actually put together yung, ano, yung mechanics Precisely. for of the course. for the OFW groups in partnership with Dolly and DFA. Yung panawagan lang namin, really, is yung mga uh, OFWs lalo na galing from Mindanao. Na I'm really sure they would also want to support peace in Mindanao. Ang problema lang talaga, paano nila mapadala? Oo. Can I comment on that, uh, Toots? Uh, it's not really a problem. Uh, it's not an ex it is an extraordinary activity though. It's not present in the yeah. rules and regulations of the DFA. But from the civil society like yours and all of you, you can write the DFA to see to it that the DFA accepts all the letters from anybody and will be sent to Manila via pouch because we have a pouch every week that leaves the embassy to Manila. And then Manila here can, uh, once it arrives here, can send it to the armed forces of the Philippines for them to distribute. So I, I don't think it's, um, uh, it's a problem. I think that would be appreciated because yeah. that would show unity uh, of all Filipinos around the world yeah. for what is happening in the South. Ma'am Toots, gusto ko lang po malaman sa inyo, uh, okay ho ba sa inyo na sinasabi ho ng iba na i-lift na lang yung martial law para matigil na yung wars? That well, that's another topic. We cannot talk about it. I'm okay. sorry. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sorry. But if you want, uh, delikad, ma mauwi tayo sa mauto nito eh. Okay. So anyway, anyway, uh, siguro ang pwede nating isuggest, dahil sa nung Vietnam War at nung Korean War, 
Merong mga celebrities who went to the soldiers, no? Like Bob Hope and company. They also entertain the troops, boost their morale and the letters. Yeah. Pwede sigurong gawin yun. I, I will recommend Tito Vic and Joey to do shows in Marawi. No? May pakinabang naman tayo kay Senator na ano. No? Anyway, uh, that's beside the point. More questions from the field? From the ladies that we have? Uh, baka may tanong pa po kayo? From the other reporters? Tracy, yes. This is a stupid question. Hindi, <laughs> curious lang ako. Stupid question from? Hindi, <laughs> curious lang ako. Hindi kasi, di ba yung these uh, OFWs are supporting the AFP and PNP, di ba? Meron bang, kasi, di ba, meron din silang mga kamag-anak sa Maute. Meron ba nang indicate din na we will show support for the Maute? Stupid nga siya. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> Thank you. Period. <laughs> oh, ayos na. Yan ba sinasabi ko? A stupid oh, question na, will have a stupid answer. Okay? Going once, twice. Lingoy? Ba? Milagro. Nag-wave si Lingoy. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who took time out uh, to be here. Toots, message. Anong nakikita niyong kinabukasan pa ng ating mga manggagawa? Prospects may not be as bright? Ano ba? I think the faster that we are able to resolve the acts of violent extremism in, in Marawi City and everywhere, the um, bigger the hope that they will be returning home soon to a more peaceful country. So everyone has a stake in what's going on in Marawi City, even our OFWs in whatever, in where, wherever they are in the world. So yung sa amin lang is that um, Qatar is okay. Saudi Arabia bears watching. We have to prepare for the end of the amnesty period. And then third, our OFWs really want to also reach out to our soldiers. So. I hope government also and civil society find ways to, to be able to do that. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, panawagan naman po namin ay eh, tayo mga Pilipino, no, nasa labas at loob man ng bansa, ay eh, magkaisa para magkaroon ng just and lasting peace dito sa atin. Hindi lang sa Mindanao, kundi sa buong daigdig, ay sa buong Pilipinas. At uh, dito po natin makikita na may kapayapaan kapag ka po mayroong social justice sa atin. Kaya po, Ang panawagan din natin, suportahan natin yung pagresolba doon sa dahilan kung bakit may mga armed conflict sa Mindanao at sa ibang parte ng Pilipinas. At uh, suportahan po natin yung mga socio-economic reforms. At uh, nung, nainiahapag ng ating iba't ibang mga uh, grupo para magkaroon ng just and lasting peace nga po sa atin. Uh, Pinag-usapan po natin dito yung uh, uh, CASER, no? Comprehensive Agreement on Socio-Economic Reforms na pinag-uusapan ng Government of the Philippines at saka po ng National Democratic Party. You know how Party. I wish the good secretary was here para napag-usapan din oh, to. Po. Kasi marami, Kahit, oh, oh. maraming parte po doon sa CASER ay tungkol po sa reintegration ng ating mga kababayan at pagkakaroon ng mga regular at nakabubuhay na trabaho dito sa atin. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, anong projection ninyo? I think... Uh, from the time I've got involved in OFW matters until today, I think it's really a big difference. I think in the next few years, we will even be much, much better. Even though our OFW is going out and getting to be more sophisticated, and we don't have those kind of problems in the past, that's unimaginable. Now the problems are more really professional problems. And I look forward that we will really be professionalizing our uh, uh, export of services. Thank you. Madam? Well, uh, of course, thank you ho ulit for having us all here. Ang masabi ko lang ho is sa mga panahon na to, napakahalaga ho nung pagtutulungan nating lahat. And the government has been uh, enhancing its program and we need also your inputs. At malaga rin ho yung edukasyon ng bawat Pilipino na umaalis ho ng ating bansa at tulong din sa mga OFW families. Ang ating pagtulong hindi yung nandoon na ho sila, kundi bago pa lang sila umalis, mabigay natin ang tamang informasyon, tamang edukasyon para whatever happens to them there, they are ready to face it. 
At mahalaga ho pag nandun ho tayo nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa ang ating mga OFWs, focus po tayo sa ating trabaho. At tumulong po tayo lahat para ipahayag natin kung ano man yung tamang informasyon para rin naman hindi nagkakaroon tayo ng mas malalim na problema. Sa ngalan po ng aming Department of Labor and Employment, our Secretary of Labor, uh, Secretary Sylvester H. Bellio III, nandito lang po ang dole, uh, kaagapay ninyo at uh, handa hong tumulong po sa lahat po ng mga manggagawang Pilipino. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, mga kaibigan. Uh, next Monday, we will try to focus on Marawi and yung extremism. No? Pwede natin pag-usapan yan sapagkat, uh, you know, malungkot. Pero, you know, one life lost is one too many. So I'd like to thank our guests who took time out to be with us. It's another wonderful experience being with you. Magandang umaga po. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo sa tapatan sa aristokrat. Thank you.